I guess I'm wearing the Hectoberfest. This is not planned at all, but happy October. Hey everyone, so today we're going to do another project from the Information Security Rico Camp curriculum. And I still hate Python, so we're just going to do more Go. And this time it's going to be the password cracker. So if you click on this, we're going to need to open this in the Replit just to see a few things. But I think this is a good use case where we can do some PDD or test driven development because it would be kind of annoying just to like print these out because it's hard to verify just by looking at it. So we're actually going to create a test module and see how that's done in Go. Now I've made an empty directory called Go Password Cracker and this is where we're going to have our project. And as always to initialize a Go project, we're going to use Go mod init followed by the GitHub repository name of whatever you want to call this. This is just Go Password Cracker. And once that's done, we can open it up in our editor, which I'm going to be using VS Code. Now, before we get started, we're actually going to want two files from the Replit. We're going to want known salts and top password crack or top 1000 passwords. And I've already gone ahead and pasted it in here. So as you can see, these are not very secure passwords, but it should be enough to get the job done as we will. And then for salts, this is kind of a randomly generated string, but it's going to be what we're going to add to the front or back of the password before we hash it. It'll be easier to see once we start doing it, but we're basically gonna concat the string during our testing. Finally, let's create our main.go file. And you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna create a hello world just to see that it works. So go run main.go, there we go. So now let's go over how testing works. We're gonna need a file called main underscore test.go. And for other modules or packages, it's going to follow the same convention. It'll be the name of the same file, underscore test. And inside of the test file, we will have to make sure that we specify the package. This one's going to be main. And then we're going to import the standard library of testing. And once that's done, we could create a function called test whatever. It doesn't really matter. But the argument here is going to be t, which is a pointer to testing, the testing generic and to use that pointer or reference. Is it a pointer or reference? No, it's a pointer. And to use that pointer, we just have to call t dot, and then on a successful test, we'll log or log f. f is gonna be where we can use a string template and add variables into it. Right now, we'll just log. And then on a failing test, we will do t dot error or error f. f is gonna be the same thing as the log f. It'll be for string templates. So now we have a failing test. To run the test in the command line, we'll just all we really need to do is type in go test and then the name of the file, or we could do dot 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 to test everything inside of the go project that we're in. And that is because we actually have to specify the root of the directory, so it'll be dot slash and then dot dot dot. And now we can see our failing test. So now let's make this a little more more useful by creating a stub for our main function, not the main function, but the, the actual implementation of this project. And I'll put it inside of a subdirectory called pass, and inside of a file called pass.go, which, I don't know, I'm not great at naming, so there we go. So this is a package pass, and the function that we want to expose is gonna be called crack sha1 hash, that takes in a string, which is gonna be the attempted password, and then a boolean of view salts of whether or not we need to actually test against with the known salts that we have. And it returns a string, so we'll make sure we have to add that. And for linting purposes, let's just return the string for now, which is called str, my bad. But with this, we can go back to our main underscore test file, make sure we import it with the name of our go module, and then the subdirectory of pass. And now we can replace this temporary test with a real test. So the first test that we're going to create is to test if the hash matches the password of Superman. And how we're going to do this is we're going to call the function and set it into a value called actual. And then with that actual value, we'll just do a simple if statement. So if it equals, we'll log a success. And we're using a string template here because we can be a little bit more explicit and actually show to the out console output what we got. And then for the else clause, we can do the same thing. We can actually use the same exact parameters from this log and paste it in here. And if we run this, 
Of course, we're going to expect this to fail because we haven't actually implemented it. We just stubbed it up. So go test dot dot dot. Once again, it fails. And we can actually see the output here. And we got an empty string. And that is because I actually forgot to add the hash in here. So let's do that. Now, I actually don't want to be really repetitive and write each test on camera. But we can at least walk through the test. So the first one is going to be Superman, then this weird QWERTY thing, then Bubbles. But then also, uh, lower down here, we're going to test if it's salted. And the salted ones are going to be the same password. So it's going to be Superman, then the QWERTY thing, then Bubbles. So it's going to repeat the same passwords. And then one of the most important edge cases, if you will, is that the password's not found. We need to actually know that too. So we'll add that test as well. And then in Go code, it'll look like this. It's all pretty much the same. We'll do actual equals to the function with the hash. And once again, the hash comes from the Python file. And I think it's kind of important to note that I'm using this naming convention where we do test hash as the actual function name. And then underscore with this, the use case. So scrolling down, we have not found and then we also have test salt for all the other ones so superman the weird qwerty thing bubbles this looks like a birthday actually oh, all right cool and for good measure let's run this actually i'm going to clear this so it'll be easier to see and we'll run it and there's a lot of output so don't be too alarmed but we can scroll up all of them failed, and we also get an appropriate message. Um, this one says success, so that has got to be a typo. Yeah, this needs to change to failed. But now that we have our test suite ready, we can go ahead and start implementing it and then reference the test to make sure that we're on the right track. So let's go back into pass.go, and I'm gonna implement the easiest test, which is to return password not in database. And this will be caused whenever we can't crack a password. But if we run the test now, we should have one success. And this is kind of hard to read without colors, but I think it worked. Cause yeah, the test hash underscore not found isn't showing up as failed. Whereas if we scroll up, it does show up. So we fixed one test. Also, I'm not sure. I think it's supposed to say one test is passed, but I guess not. That's okay. So I'm gonna create a couple of helper functions here. The first one is gonna be read in passwords, and this is gonna just take the input of our top 10,000 password file. We're gonna need to use the ioutil package or library, and the function is read file up 10,000 passwords.txt and we're not going to do any crazy error checking so if there is an error we'll just print it out and then if there's not an error we're going to take the buffer and then pass it to a string or stringify it and what we return is going to be a slice of that password string we're going to slice it on a new line and here i'm going to be using the strings library from the standard library we'll do the same thing for salts so known salts.txt it's going to be important to note that when you call read file, this is going to, going to be relative to where you're calling the function. And since we're going to be calling it in the root of our project directory, it's there. And that's why we don't have the dot dot slash that you would assume. Because then that would be relative to this file. But hopefully I didn't confuse you. I'm sorry. <laughs> this actually is the same exact function. It's not dry, but I don't want to refactor it. So we'll, we'll just leave that at that. And then finally, we're going to create the hash function. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit so you could better see it. So the idea here is that we're going to do a little bit of brute force. We're going to hash the string that we're expecting that we get from known passwords and then compare it with the hashed password that it comes in from the input because it's actually a lot harder to unhash a password without some other crazy stuff. And to do this, we're going to need to use the SHA-1 library. But basically, 
what is happening here is that we're going to sum up all the bytes of the given input string and it's going to give us a, a buffer string or a byte string that will then have to convert back to a string with s print s print f and like print f this is a template string using the percent x as taking in bytes i believe but with that helper function out of we can actually use it now to test out our crack shot one as mentioned before we're gonna brute force it so we're gonna take in all the known passwords from a 10,000 uh txt file this is underscore because we don't need the index we just need the password itself and then for each password we'll hash the password and by password i mean these inputs here with that we'll compare it to the string that we're cracking and if it's a match we'll return if however we go through this entire for loop and don't reach anything we'll return password not in database and now if we run our test we're going to expect half of these to go away so go test again and there we go we have less failing although we we don't see the passing let me see i think it's dash v yeah all right so if you run the command with dash v and dash v means verbose it'll tell you the passing tests so this pass these pass but these still fail down here so now we have to implement the salts which is concatenating the extra stuff before and after the password string and of course i'm gonna make a helper function because that's what i did this time we're gonna be returning a slice of strings so before i go into the for loop i want to say that we're creating a variable so a place of memory to hold the slice of string and then we're going to return it and the for loop is just going to populate that entire slice now what happens in the loop is actually pretty simple we're just going to append so add to the slice two different hash strings one with the salt at the end of the string and one with the salt at the beginning of the string and with all of these salted hashes we'll return the entire slice which now means we need to create another condition where we check if the use salt argument is true and we have to do different behavior and i know this is kind of gross because it's a nested for loop but it's kind of the only way we have to, we could do it but we're going to take the password from the outer for loop hash it with the salt in the inner for loop and for each of those values we'll check if it matches the input string and the same thing we'll just return it and hopefully this early return will not be too detrimental in terms of o of n because we are if we hit the password early enough it should just do it instantly and not need to worry about the outer for loop and all that but with that we can run the test again i'm gonna run it without the verbose and we got an okay which is good that means all of our tests pass and then with the verbose we can actually see the expected and got values we can see all these expected got and all these successes which is great for us and there you have it we have successfully created a password cracker it's probably not the greatest password cracker but we're cracking sha ones given 10,000 different passwords and known salts and we did it all in golang and we went with the test driven development approach which is kind of new for me but as always i hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.